Thank you for stopping by Ballista Barbecue. On this video, I'm going to be making a prime rib sandwich inspired by the flavors of Argentina and Mexico. Let's get going. All right, the first thing we're going to do is make sort of a chimichurri sauce. It's got a lot of those traditional chimichurri ingredients, but it also has some of the local flavors around here, a lot of kind of a Mexican vibe going on. We're going to kick it off with one half cup red wine vinegar. And I'm using a food processor here. You could use, you know, a mortar and pestle, a mocajeta, whatever you want to call it. I'm going the easy way here. I have four cloves of garlic that I just sort of roughly chopped, one shallot, and I'm adding a habanero pepper. I've quartered it and removed the membrane as well as the seeds. I just want to get the more bulkier ingredients kind of processed right now. Now I'm going to add some fresh oregano. This will probably chop down to about two tablespoons, probably about a half cup or so of cilantro. Again, we're going kind of local here. A little less, about a quarter cup flat leaf parsley. This processed a bit. Now I'm going to be salting this to taste, but I'm going to start out with a good pinch, probably about a teaspoon. Going to start adding some extra virgin olive oil. And that's what I'm looking for. I'm going to pour this in a bowl. It'll get better as it sets. Throw it in the fridge. Let's prep that prime rib. And here's the star of today's show. It's a bone-in prime rib, a little over five pounds. It's two bones. The bones have been cut, but they're trussed on. I'm cooking it with the bones, again, to take advantage of that, uh, the great flavor that the bones will provide. First thing I'm going to do is add some Worcester sauce, Worcestershire sauce, to the... Uh, Prime rib here is a kind of a binder for the seasonings we're putting on. But this stuff has, again, some great characteristics, that umami thing going on here. There we go, that looks good. So I'm just hitting it with kosher salt, coarse ground kosher salt, and black pepper, that's it. Have a lot of flavors going on anyway, and then again that Worcester sauce, Worcester sauce, Whatever you want to call it, sauce, has a lot of great stuff. All right, looks good. I have the Primo Oval XL preheated outside. Meet you out in the patio. All right, I have the Primo preheated and we are ready to start cooking. Get the roast on. We'll go ahead and get the temperature probe in. Make sure we're not touching the bones. It's in the thickest part, center of the uh, roast here. Close the lid. All right, we're gonna talk about temperatures as far as what I'm running the pit at, what my goal temperature is as far as the meat is concerned. First, I wanna let you guys know, Thermoworks sent me some products to review, to test out, and I'm using what's called Smoke right now. It's a thermometer system, it's a dual channel, monitors the temperature of the cooker and the meat, and it's got a wireless receiver. I'll be honest with you, I've been using this thing off camera, just personally, and I'm not even gonna waste anybody's time doing an unboxing and a review. This thing is amazing, and I'll show you this product and I'll give you enough information to where you can make an educated decision, but this thing is insane. Anyway, let's check it out. All right, so let's take a look at this. My goal is to cook at 200 degrees. We're going to set our high alarm right now. So 
Here is the cooker temperature. Here's the set button for that. Push the set button and then you have up and down arrows. We're just going to arrow out. And I'm going to set the maximum temp. We'll say 240. Low temp, I'm just going to leave it at 31 so it doesn't bug me. It's, we're not going to get anywhere near that set. Okay, now the meat temperature. Well, I already have it set. 128, that's my target temperature. It, we're cooking at such a low temperature, the uh, carriers are not really going to affect it. We'll just leave the low temp at 32. Again, it's not going to get below that. You have on and off buttons, so you can turn off each probe. So now we're going. So here is the, the wireless receiver. I'm telling you, I've used a lot of uh, thermometer products. This thing's got a lot of heft to it. And the transmitter itself has the usual little kind of a kickstand so you can set it on you know, a shelf, like a, you know, like a picture frame. But it also has some very, very powerful magnets. I mean, shockingly powerful magnets. I don't know if they're using like a rare earth magnet or what, but I'm impressed by that. I was using it on my pit barrel like last week and that thing just almost pulled itself out of my hand, snapping to the little horseshoe handle. So, especially for my gator pit, it's gonna be awesome for that. Anyway, as I said, the temperature of the pit's going to stay at 200 degrees. I may go up or down, you know, 10, 15 degrees. I'm not really concerned about that. I just wanna cook this very, very low temperature. And again, 200 is what I'm running. My target temperature for the meat is 128. Cooking at such a low temperature, the carryover is really not going to affect it. After we hit 128, I'll pull it off the pit. We're going to open up the dampers on this uh, Oval XL here, crank up the heat, and then we'll get a nice crust on it. So, uh, see you in a bit. All right, there we go. All right, we're at that 128 degree mark. It took three hours, 45 minutes to get there. And again, running the pit at 200 degrees. It's been really stable. I've been going from 200 to 205, 204, but I haven't went past 204. Very happy about that. Let's take a peek. Look at that, just gorgeous color, gorgeous color. Next thing I'm going to do is pull this meat off of the pit. We're gonna let it rest a little bit. In the meantime, I'm cranking this Primo up. I'm gonna unleash the beast here. We're gonna put it back on the Syret. So see you in a bit. All right, the Primo is blazing now over 500 degrees. We're gonna put this rib roast back on the grill, give it a nice crust. And here's where you wanna definitely burp the Kamado grill. We're just gonna leave this inside for about five minutes. All right, five minutes have passed, let's check this out. Again, burp. Look at that. All right, I'm going to allow this to rest. I have another little setup to do on the grill. Here we're gonna make the best prime rib sandwich you guys have ever seen. All right, first off, I apologize for the crazy light that's going on right now. I've tried to arrange things to compensate for it, but we live up on a hill and the sun's starting to come down and it's, as you can see, the smoke, the rays of sun coming through the smoke. It's coming in hot. I rearranged the Primo a little bit, gave it a twist to kind of help out a little bit, put it back to the sun. Anyway, I've got the ballistic griddle made for gas grills, actually preheated right now on the Primo. We're gonna start kind of grilling up some vegetables and some cheese to top this sandwich with. <laughs> thing I'm going to do is get a little olive oil down and I have some just rough cut red onions here and I'm not going for caramelization I just want to get these the guys kind of softened up a little bit because I want that bite that red onion has Now also on the grill, I put some chopped tomatoes and these are heirloom tomatoes. I just wanted some color going on. So we got the yellow and red and a kind of burgundy colored. 
All right, these are getting nice and soft. So push these off over here, let them continue what they're doing. Tomatoes are gonna get really sweet. All right, I have here a Belillo roll. This is the same roll that they make tortas in Mexico with. Get this on the grate over here. Let's give it a little bit of a toast. In the meantime, a little bit more oil, grilled provolone cheese. We're gonna use that on my sandwich here. So put down some provolone cheese. Not bad. Grill, the grill probably should have been a little bit hotter, but this is actually more what I'm looking for anyway for this sandwich. All right, and I think we are ready to start building this bad boy. All right, now just look at that. Some of the prime rib on. Some of those tomatoes and onions. Chimichurri sauce. And there you go. This thing looks and smells amazing. Let's give this a try. Look at that. First off, that prime rib was cooked to perfection. And being sliced paper thin like that, it's awesome. I mean, it just adds something special. It makes it that much more tender, even though cooking it at 200 degrees for almost four hours did the job anyway. Nice smoky flavor, but not overpowering. The Tomatoes, it's surprising what cooked tomatoes will do to a sandwich like this. It just enhances the flavors. I mean, just nice sweetness, but just that little bit of acid. The chimichurri sauce, very, very happy with that. Again, it's got that Argentina kind of feel, but also, you know, the kind of local Mexican kind of thing going on. And the Belillo rolls, they're just so soft. I mean, these things make the most insane sandwiches. Very happy with this cook. Anyway, guys, thanks for stopping by. Um, again, that Thermalworks smoke works awesome. I'll have a link down below if you want to check them out. Uh, there's really nothing negative I can say about it. Very, very user-friendly, extremely well-built, and very, very accurate. On that note, comparing the, the Thermalworks, the smoke, the temperature reading it was you know, providing me with on the cooker and the, you know, that analog thermometer that the Primo has, surprisingly accurate that that primo thermometer so cheers to primo for that anyway let me see beer today i'm actually drinking the stone mocha ipa and honestly the reason i selected this is because i have some that being said i bought kind of a variety pack of stone not really the coffee beer drinking guy the you know coffee beers but this is insane i mean really really good and beef and beer kind of go hand in hand. Anyway, see you guys in the next video. Cheers.